All right, welcome. So in this setting today, what we're going to focus into is a reclining supportive bound angle. So since this is angles in the levers of the body and the legs, but also in the arms, if you have some extra props like a ball, we will use that in the beginning today. So, and, and actually that could this really be any kind of object that's in a circular um, um, incarnation. Okay, so we're gonna sit with our pelvis and it's really um, nudged up against the bolster. I'm not sitting on it, I'm sitting in front of it. And with the support of my blocks under my legs, I have the capacity to feel the, the kind of the wedge of the sitting bowl. Because you kind of have a bowl that you are sitting into, kind of a scoop. And with that scoopy sensation of your pelvis, let's work on this posture where we can bring our belt over our head. And we're going to take our belt so it's in a loop. And I want to encourage you, I'll give you a, a viewpoint of it. You're still sitting with your back to the bolster. And you're going to try to take that belt and have enough of a loop that you can cross it so it has a little bit of an X. You've turned the belt, you've actually kind of twisted the belt close to the feet, which is generally a no-no, is to not twist belts. But we'll still have some good karma intact from this one. So this will still pull on the lever at the base of the leg, and then it will actually bring some awareness into the low back zone through the whole leg base. Okay. This is an option to have that cross. And if it's a little confusing, I recommend just get a feel of the belt over your feet, lift it up, twist it, and then place it back over the feet. And then as you start to lower back, you've got a ball, okay? You place it next to your hip. If you don't have one, pass on those instructions. You can put your sand on your feet or across your ribs. You be the side. You have two sandbags. Place one on each zone or one on each side. So if you're lucky enough to have a sand piece or a bag of rice that you can get to kind of absorb in the reach of the ribs so they don't feel so boxed. So I'm trying to spread the chest and even find this focus of letting the belly open and the thighs approach the reality of supporting my back muscles. Okay. So if you anticipate something to change, this might be a good moment to see if you can work on balancing and refining your pose, one position of breath at a time. Let your feet relax so the toes are not pushing together. And then door one, you could let the arms release out. And door two, you could grasp the ball. And feeling when the hands are on the roundness of the ball, that gives the elbows a position of bending. And then as you carry the ball back over head, I want you to work your wave of reach of the arm length so both arms included. You're trying to equalize that lengthening of your arms, that reach of the chest at the top corners. And so if you feel as if your chin is pushing in even slightly, I would recommend to either make that blanket a little bit lower or you could get rid of it all together for this first pulse. So essential that you can actually feel the upper chest relax. Not necessarily the arms right now. They're, they're fully in operation. So with your eyes resting, backward, inward, go 
those that have a ball, likely the circulation starting to spin around the armpits or other spaces of the arm. So giving some gradual motion, alternating above your heart, and then back overhead. Let's try to explore these ranges without necessarily uh, defining everything. I have a challenge with that. I like to explain it. But feeling, and then if the feeling is good, you can go with it. And if it's not, you're in your home practice. You could toss the ball. You could put it down and let the arms open and then even come back to it in another few breaths. So what I'm working with now is engaging the pace of my breath with the length of my breath. So as I move my ball back over, inhale, filling the ribs, and then as I exhale, I feel the ribs easily rest down. It's even a faster moment than my inhale. And now you could keep with the ball motion, and if that's becoming too routine for you right now, you just put it aside and you let your arms abide the sides and feel the open quality of the shoulders right at that inner tip. Now feeling where the circulation is broadening the chest. And in the shape, the breath almost goes automatically to the top of the lungs. So create motion of your belly and the motion of the ribs. You might not be able to do both at the same time. So creating a zone of awareness into your practice. This is a good few moments to settle in into your safe practice space. Just let any distractions come and go. Hopefully they go. Another will come along. Now the only real fidgeting in this position is in breathing. And you can fidget with your breath all you want. You could draw the breath in for a short pause and then let the exhalation lengthen. You could play with that. But since our focus is very calming, nourishing for the heart, strengthening for the lungs, it might be well suited for us to feel the inhale deeply and let the exhalation relax out of ourselves. So focus on the exhalation. Now, if the legs are so-so, right, they've been in the same setting for a bit, we'll start to move our operation of the bound angle, okay? So when we start in this pose, I like this because we get the benefits of upper and lower body in one shape, right? So we find openness in both um, portions, and the mid-body is hopefully coordinated enough to feel that balance. So I will move and kind of break into a second phase. So what we'll do is unbuckle the belt, space two practice. Okay, and I slide it away. And as I move my knees to point up, I'm gonna alternate um, knee towards actually the core of my body. So as if I push and step and then alternate lifting the knee up. Now, what is the point of this, right? It's it's got a clear focus in the pelvic backing, right, the back of the pelvis. And as you feel your 
thigh, pedal thigh, thigh moving up. I want you to focus on uh, feeling your foot on the floor pushing as if it's making a deeper footprint into the floor each time. So I push down, I try to widen my stance, and I lift the alternating leg, kind of warming up in the psoas here. It's a good place because we will be stretching around that zone in a moment. Now, next time you step down, whatever side you're on, doesn't matter, we'll meet at the same side here. And we'll lift the right foot, cross it over to the left knee. And then I want you to reach for your ball or a block besides your left thigh. And you'll place that besides the left top outer thigh. Keep it simple. Some of us might move it a little lower on the thigh, but unlikely will it go to your waist, right? It'll be next to your hip and below on the left side. And then I'll start to lean my left thigh into that ball. And I just happen to have my sand still on, and it's working fine. It's not distracting me too much. If anything, I like it because it's grounding as often as I can. It's like rarely run around with a sandbag. This would be an opportunity to keep my spine back. And as I reach with my left hand to the right knee, my left foot is sickled, right? It's slightly turned out on the floor. I don't know where else it would want to go right now, but that's probably where it ends up most of the time. Feet and floors are usually together. So when I cross the lower basin of my pelvis, I feel my hip and just noticing if you feel your torso centered. Now, the only reason I have the sand is to keep myself from basically twisting over with my torso. But it's personal choice. Now, as your right arm either stretches besides your head or on the floor, give a few moments here. And since the right glute feels this, if your left ankle is having a bad moment with it being kind of rotated, I'm going to put my weight back on the side of my left foot on the bone shear. So I'm not violating any, any of the awareness in my ankle. And I want to try to keep, keep that space so it's not in an injury-prone state. And give that right leg enough of a tug with your left arm strength. Now, as an optional transition, I'm going to have my right leg stay on the left, crossing. And I'm going to put the ball over besides my right upper thigh, and the block would be fine too. And lean into that and feel this left IT band. I try to keep my leg pretty highly crossed. Um, otherwise, it, it's a little bit discomfort with the knee. It could be, it might not be, but. Let's just be safe. So I have that crossing, and it's pretty slight as far as how much it looks like I'm moving. But I feel a concrete reality in my left upper outer thigh. I do feel that area. Let your arms rest. Give it another couple breaths. This is a counter twist, meaning we're not in it as long. Trying to rebalance in the SI. Now bring the knees back center, and then as you prep to switch, feel the spine, feel the arch, feel both arms stretch back, reach through your arms separately. Okay. Feel if you can hold your elbows. You got two crossings with the elbows, so switch to each crossing within those few seconds. Feel the ribs design. If you're not impressed with your sandbag still there, get rid of it. It might start to lose its um, the experience of wellness from the sand after a while. 
And then on my right foot is close to my right buttock, my left leg lifts, and I'm working on pulling my thigh in and then crossing the ankle to the right. Yeah, I might have to pitch it a bit, but when I lower down my arms and I let my right thigh cross over to feel that pressure into the ball, I'm going to hold on to the left knee. Okay. So feeling that design of pressure given by holding on to the knee, drawing it in. Left arm could reach back. And perhaps you arrive at a focus where this practice is fairly meditative in nature. It's a very slow, core-based practice. So feel where gravity flows through the torso, the hip so, the leg so. That left arm could be reaching, it could be beside you. Does it feel a little different on this hip? Yeah, it might feel as if it's the buttock, hip root. It is associated with legs, right? They, their openness affects the motion and posture and how you trot along in the world. This is all for walking prep. And now I'm going to counter twist. So I'm going to start to shift my left um, leg crosses over. The ball or block is fine. The block would be just as well. I don't think we have to find a prop that's better than another prop. It's a little bit more responsive of a surface. It's nice to have something that's responsive in the practice. Yeah, and the selected awareness is really at that top kind of outer zone of this right body, the IT band. Okay? And if you had isolation tactic here, you could find some other muscle piriformis, other spaces you could palpate. But we're going to get into that with our next shape. To be continued. Okay. So get a feel here. All right. So as we come back in center, uncross. Yeah. Place a ball or a block between the knees, and then moving your stand side. Okay. So as the arms reach back. Now that you're already in the session, we are going to give some core influence today. And it's also strength in the core as well, including the upper lower zone. So I squeeze into the object center of my knees, and as I come up, I want you to reach your hands so they actually come to the floor behind your hips. So if your belt is in your way, you might push it aside. And walk your feet forward, okay? Shoulders back, door one is here. Squeeze the ball or block. Okay, door two, I'm scooping the pelvis under. Door three, I lift up. This would be a good one to stack some blocks under your rear and hold yourself up too, I suppose. But the key here is I lift up my chest. Just calm down, however you come down. You might sit down fast. Okay, so let's try this for a moment where we have our hands turned out. Fingers turned out. Okay, so shoulders back, chest open, vision forward. Push into the ball or block, power the pelvis up, lift. Now you could keep that cervical curl where I look towards the front. Start to lift up, try to get the shoulders to motion in power. So I'm powering through my arms. 
My legs are having a challenge to keep me up. My arms are doing a lot of the work. Okay, so this time when you sit down, we're going to bring our arms forward. We're feeling pretty, pretty thrilled that they're off the ground. And squeeze into the object between the knees and lean back. Just a little bit, not all the way, no relaxation. Squeeze and move forwards. Right? So you're a little bit train like here. You're shifting back. Not really a choo choo train, but you're reaching forward and then you're moving back. So feeling the gliding motion. Um, some of us are aware of gliding when we shift our ribs side to side. We transfer uh, weight from one side to the next with our hips and our ribs. But now we're going forward and back with the core. So I really encourage you, encourage you, to squeeze the objects intensely in the last two. So really squeeze. So maybe the belly is completely concerned about what's ahead. Okay, so next time you come into center, move the ball and then turn to your left hip or looking towards the screen here. And we'll move our props into a side stage step. So all things are uncertain here as well. So with this setting, I, I like to explore. I, I have to have some inspiration to explore sometimes. So I'm going to work with the classic pose. Keep the rules. Stay with the rules in a different phase. OK? So I've got my side base. And I'm going to bring a block overhead, just in case, and a sandbag and a ball or another block to my right leg, okay? So prep, ball or not, inside the right leg, stand on right hip, and then as you lean into it, the likelihood of you wandering with this, like lifting and kind of wandering, is, is a little greater when you're at home and if you're in the studio, okay? So, this would be a nice one to feature the travel from your belly button, dissecting all the way to your lower ribs, right? And then back from there, that thoracolumbar junction. So get a feel when that bolster's really close, really tucked in. I'm trying to get my waist on that bolster to support me. And then as I move my right arm over, I've got a block. The block could make it a little more comforting, spatially lengthening. And feel where the feet have ability to stretch, especially, well, it's not so much your feet, I guess. It's more your leg, isn't it? So your left leg is going to try a scissor kick. However, if this is awkward for your back or you feel like, oh, that's a lot more stretch on my back than I need today, you can bend your knee again. And notice how that supports your back, how lunge patterns in the leg are supportive of our back. Yeah, fidgeting is required on this one, I think. It has, a, it has a fidget asana component, okay? So that upper arm could be where you personally feel that there is some energy moving through your side. Put your eyes closed if possible. Let the ribs move with the breath. Try to get big with the ribs. Making a little more space inside, spreading. Now, as you work on that waist tail, breathing with the waist. 
On the exhale, let your brain rest into the blanket. Upper arm can move behind you to have a rest. And the arm might not feel like it's reaching back, but it's opening the chest and the hand is relaxed. Now that's interesting um, pattern to feel. Instead of trying to get into a pose, but we're working on moving into stillness, and then we can study our breath. So feel what you create. And start to polish the side stage for the final few moments. If you're, any little portion of your neck feels gripping, feel where you can let your head relax. Sometimes you have to kind of burrow it into the blanket, like purposely press it down to relax your neck. Take a few more neck stretches here. So that would be my right arm is back. It's really back behind me to stretch the right side of my neck. This is one way we can stretch our neck, letting gravity do the work. Two more slow breaths. Now the left leg draws the foot in closest. And the left knee draws up to the bolster. And then you're going to start to move your right hip a little back and inwards towards the bolster. So if I move away, it stretches my torso, especially with weight on it. That definitely brings an impulse. Now we're going to work our way through this right siding right down into the hip crater. Okay, so this is, is not a creation, but it's an actual sequencing. So I'm gonna move my sand aside. And then when I turn and rotate, I'm gonna use my hands to bring myself up. And then clearly the blanket behind you could be a kind of a support here. But when I come around to sit on the bolster, my right leg is crossed in front of my left. And I'm gonna place, um, I, I like to use, kind of alternate the use of the ball or the block on this. So you decide what's under your left knee, it's up to you. It could be a block, it could be a ball. It could be something else that you have around your house. But you'll add something under the left leg so that the hips get a feeling of being um, Comfortable, right? I don't want my knee to be angled so far downwards that it's difficult. But let's say you're very comfortable in your hips, you might go without the ball, as long as you don't fall off of your bolster. Okay. So now I've got some props. I'm going to get a hold of a block or two. My sand is on the top of the right thigh, and I'm going to walk the blocks forward or to the left. So be in pursuit of hip happiness here, in the pursuit of the hip. So on a hip pursuit, I feel the blocks moving left, or one block, however, however many you have to use. I feel a little more concentration in my hip when I take the blocks to the top left corner. You might find forward is plenty. We're going to kind of swoop through the channels of the legs and the siding. Leg siding, your, your actual side siding. And if you let your eyes close, you might, there might be some sightings inside of you. And I try to keep the spine lengthening versus rounding. It's challenging here. So if your back is scooped, like you're the rounded back, wherever you are with your blocks in front of you, side or to the front, you want to try to keep that extension of the back. And this is a little bit of a 
plank. So we're going to move our blocks back beside us, stretch our right leg out, move our sand to the left leg, okay? And then you're going to take a block beside your right leg and reach down. I like to use the, the floor to push my block along the sides of my right leg and then stretch my left arm over. Yeah, so play with that side. All right, so you're reaching into that seated side angle. And the arms both activating. Now if I turn my gaze or even simply my face towards the left arm, there is some spine opportunities with that. And there's also a spine opportunity if I slowly rotate my head to my right leg and feel the reach of my left arm lengthen, right? So if I'm turning up, it's a little shorter, right? There's a shorter stretch. And when I turn my head, it's that movement of my neck and a trapezius here. It's kind of neat to, to notice the different opportunities. This will be a little more chest. This will be a little bit more back stretch with my head turning down. And now as you slide the block in, we're going to bring the hands to help us get to a twist. So the twist option will be a couple variations. I'm going to move the ball or block away from under my leg. Cross the right leg over left. All right, so I'm over the left knee. Now, if this doesn't work for your knees, you can have your left leg straight. Yeah, I think I have, I have a preference for this sometimes because it feels very tall on my back. But I like the extra pelvis focus on the knees both bending. So now we're going to start with our arms open, okay? In fact, if you have a belt in, like get your belt and bring the arms. We'll go with the belt overhead because that's, that's a tradition. Okay, so we'll go with tradition here. Open the arms out wide, out with the arms. Okay, so I'm going to move my belt all the way back. i got to maybe give my hands a little farther on the belt. Ouch. Open the chest. Stay with the energy. It's all temporary. Okay, so if the energy is hurtful, right, you're going to get out of the pose. Okay. If I lower the arms down, down, right to like almost lose grasp on the belt, but I still feel a sliver into my, kind of the veins of my upper arms that slide into the shoulders. I'm going to feel arm, shoulders. Okay, so let go of the belt. Bring the left arm forward, cross it at the right leg. And then reach your right hand back to your blankie. Okay. So shoulder on that right side tries to go back. If you like to go with holding onto the sandbag handle, you could adjust your right hand to hold the handle if you have a handle on yours. Twist. However, to try to get there, you, you achieve twist in the digestive tract, which is an achievement on its own anyhow, but my shoulder rotates in. So I'm probably better off with the structural um, support. That's something we can all work on is our structural relationships. <laughs> so much for the other ones, right? It's your structure and you. That's a whole other marriage. Okay. So the left arm is pressing and the waist is a working. Breathe. Give yourself a few moments of mingling with effort. Inhaling, exhaling, twist. Inhaling deep, exhaling, twist. Left arm is strong. Okay, now we're going to come back through to center, counter twist it because that's always good medicine to counter twist the spine. Yeah, and if you feel a little slouchy in the 
corsy, right? You want to try to lift up, feel the sitting zone. Okay, talk about pelvis here. As we unwind, we're going to move our sand to our feet. Oh boy. Okay. We're going to keep our seat on the uh, bolster. And I've got some space between my blankets and my bolster. Right? So I got my hands on the floor there. I'm going to lean back. I'm going to move my shoulders back. And I've got my sand on my feet. So that's a little bit of of balance for me. Okay. So what we'll do is I'm going to separate my feet so they're a little bit wide. We're towards the edges, you know, almost actually not quite the edge of the sand base. But when I push into my feet, I want you to try to lift up the hips, move the chest open. If you feel like uh, too much in shoulder, I don't want to do it, that's okay. You can pose pass too, or try turning the hands out. Shoulders back, lift up. Give it another try. Chest is working. Breathe. Yeah, use your legs. Try to power through the pelvis. Now look forwards. And then as you sit down, right, get a feel here for hands on bolster. Lean down so you're sitting in front of the bolster on the floor. Hold on to the sandbag, and some of you might not have sand with handles, okay? Sand with the benefit of handles is, is unique, but some of you might have a little bit of a hook on each side. So I want you to either get that hold, or if you don't have that, hold the um, shins. Perfect, okay? So you're going to lean back towards bolster, and then you're going to bend your elbows and pull yourself up. You can also do this with a block or ball between the knees, but we're going to keep it real simple. Inhale up. Exhale, knee. Inhale, forward. And then knee. So try to use that grasp on the handles to organize some strength in your midsection, like your Trying to get the board from your sitting bone forward into the spine, straight up to the brain stem. Last time, lean back. Your knees are apart. And then as you move up, my knees still stay apart. I'm going to bring the hands forwards. And then move my sand off my feet and prep for side stage to the other side. Okay. Right hip down. So I lean into my bolster set. I've got a bolster set or bolster blanket set. If you have two bolsters, you can do that too. Um, have a, a sand on the left exterior. And keep in mind, it's, it's okay to change your blanket around, right? I'm going to turn mine because I, I, I feel a little bit opposed to turning away from you. A little time here. So feel where your support is under your head that's enough and comforting. And then get that sand support on your side so you have the capacity to lengthen your side. Right leg can bend or straighten. You can kick out the right leg. Yeah, feel where the ribs texture is certainly supported by this breathing focus in your costumes, your costumes. So how do you go intercostally? Right, it's not via a belly breath. It may take you a few breaths with your mouth at the beginning, but I sense that you can breathe through the nose with this one and really span between the ribs. Now let the mind relax. Let your left arm be wherever it is. If it's not on a block, maybe it's behind you. Maybe a block is opening out to that side for whole team. It's kind of fun to, to play a bit with the basics and then see if you can motion out from the frame. So 
but if you can make the practice about you, especially a home practice, it should be very personalized for your knees. Okay, if your knee is not liking the position with the ball out of the block, you might end up moving it away or kind of playing around with where it supports you. This side, I feel like the ball is much better if it's near my lower inner leg bone. So I just kind of play around with it a little bit. And you might decide, nope, I'm going to have my knees together in fetal position. And that's pretty pleasant too on my low back. So be aware we spend all this time um, wandering through the inner spaces of body right, to help with that flush, change the way gravity moves through the organs. So pretty much all of it's good. As long as we don't violate um, some good postural science here. And now feel where that left arm is in a reach and then start to lower down. You're going to turn to your left, or actually down to your right. And then when you come up, this left hip is the focus, right? So you stay focused. I come around this time, come up to sitting, left thigh. And now this, this round, we're going to be moving along a bit. So since we have an idea of it, have a ball under your right knee, stand on left side, okay? And then feel where the support is when you lean forward. So you wanna magnify the sensation that's in that front left side. Blocks could be up, they could be to the right side. You have all options here for this. Now you certainly will want to stay with this reality of leaning forward. Right, if you tend to move as far front as you can and round your back deeper, then you might find that in the end, you'll get a little more support if your spine is really reaching out of the roots of the pelvis. So feel the body wander a little side to side, ribs, hips, maybe taking your decider out of it and try to go with feeling, there's probably another sense here. So connect besides the eyes and the ears and feel. And now when we move our blocks either from the right, if you have them over there, back to the front, try to keep it very balanced. Back and then left leg out. Sand over to right. Sand over, sand over. Okay. All right. I'm going to keep the ball in my leg. It just feels pretty nice to have that, that, that little bit of bounce to my pose. And then as I lean to the left, you might kind of play with these variations, this side angle. So when you lean into it, that's one version. When we do expanding today, you kind of, kind of notice the, the, um, the balance of these two internally. So when I'm seated, it's, I'm really interested in the side reach. So I'm going to put that block to the outer left leg. I'm going to play with it with leaning to my left, feeling my elbow down. Maybe I put my block up and my elbow on it. And then my balance is in my right side of my waist and my arm reaching forward. I'm kind of craving, feeling the session can become a little bit like a 
um, a therapeutic um, motions inside the body, right? So it's not a pose to pose practice, right? There's moving within the pose, feeling where the position aligns for you, right? So if I feel my left side careening over and my right arm has a reach to it, and there is a framework here in which I'm finding my edge, but the balance of the breath brings me back to the reality that, right, it can always get a little bit further, a little more intense, but I'll use my breath to ground me. So take a few more moments. If your head turns towards the arm or your head turns towards the left leg, feel the difference in the stretch in your back your shoulder, different. Just turning your head changes it. Yeah, I, I generally think brain down is the smart move, but it's not so true, right, for your, your posture and your upper back. If you can find a way to balance your bones, Okay, now, as we, and that's the ultimate, how can we balance the way to be in our bones? So, when the right arm sweeps back, and feel if you can come up, I mean, you get a little bit kind of, um, you know, mechanical in these positions sometimes. So, feel when you come up, try to let things get a little oozy. I feel a little bit more comfortable in a setting like this sometimes to play. Um, so, my left leg goes across. And the left leg, oh sorry, the right leg could be straight as well with my twist. Okay, so I'll, I'll show that version this time. So if I keep the right leg straight, this time we're going to go right into the rotation. If you liked using the belts last time, go for it again. Let's say you like that discipline of the belts, approach, open, open. Shoulders, arms, turn left, right arm presses to the left leg. Lift the chest. Right, we don't want the ribs to feel small. We want them to feel like they are as tall as the spine can be. Whatever uh, your leg is. So if my leg is pulled in to make this bowl of my pelvis, it's pretty different in the stretch of my waist. It's quite a bit more. And you'll notice that that rounds the, the lumbar connecting into the back of the pelvis, into the SI joint. You might go, oh, kind of turns. Now the left hand will stay on the blanket, but you could reach your hand to the loop on the sandbag. Feel the balance of rustling your way into this one and the exhalation noticeably affects your mental state. You might hug your knee in instead of hooking the elbow and instead of pushing and jabbing and hold it. And then the one thing to pause on in the practice is to refrain from holding and tightening your breath, because right? that's not a good, like, good idea for the blood pressure. So at all times, try to keep that low at all times. And now as we start to loosen up this grip with the right arm, we just counter twist, so it's simple. We rotate, left arm, Inside, I turn to the right. Try to keep my brain up. Get a feel if your head turns right, turns left. Keep center. Another in breath. Oh, another one. Now, as you come out, you got any itches or anything? This is a good time to get those before we shift back into kitchen. So you're going to move your blocks to the sides and your blankie behind you gets to stay one only. 
Okay, so I'm going to slide one behind my bolster. Move your sand aside and take your left leg back. Okay. Now, depending on where you are on your mat, maybe you need to move things around a little bit if you're off of that. Okay. So I've got my blanket behind and I'm going to situate myself so my right leg is hooked over that bolster body. Okay. So get a feel for it now. As your leg is hooked over, can you surpass, right, the, the position of rounding too much in the back right now? So feel the arch. Now, if you like to come down on your elbows, this is a deeper stretch. Going with that position. If you want to bend your back leg and feel where the weight transfers into the front leg, can you bend your back leg? Pretty interesting. Yeah, let's let's try to avoid trying to hold our foot behind us. Just get a feel right now of the connection of how the leg movement directs into the hip. And the things you do to get into your hip, huh? How many pretzel moves can I get into my my hip crater here. So the, the hip is, is quite a uh, place for holding things, right? It's like the, the closets of the body and the hips. Okay, now let's get all legs here. So we'll let the toes hook under on the left foot, walk the hands on in, and this right leg is focused. Okay, so I'm going to try to muster my muscles, muscle muster, mustering here. Toes under. Not muscle muster, just muscle mustering. So I toe under and then I bring my right leg back. Now I'm going to hobble a bit to get here, but my right leg lifts up. I'm going to turn that thigh open, oftentimes called fire hydrant pose. But my right hip was recently in a little bit of this position. I mean, it was forward and hooked open, right? So right now we, we are reflecting on that and draining out the hip. So feel that you are powering through the palms, palms power. Okay, if your toes are stretching up on your left foot, try to reach through the ball of the foot. I don't know how many minutes here. Okay, so let's switch it, and just for fun, we'll switch to side of the leg up. So left leg up, just for fun, because we can have fun with this. So left hip opens, I'm feeling the leg stretching. I have both legs a little bit, but mostly my right. Feel where you balance through the waist. Feel torso. Breath in. You know, with all this arching, right, we're going to come back through center and into a upright push-up pattern. So I feel my feet straight back. I, I feel like arching helps me do this, but I'm going to try to stay focused. And lower your knees. See if you can roll forward on the toes, like you're moving through a flexible foot. Footing. Knees down, whoo, that feels good. Turn your fingers back, stretch your wrists. So this is yikesy, yikesy. You might end up turning your hands out. You don't have to hurt your wrist here, but feeling a little stretch through the actual hand print. Okay. Now we can do cat cow with the hands this way or the hands fingers forwards. So I'm going to try this version with my thumb stretching out, fingers facing towards my bolster, and round my back. Now if it starts to get positionally pressure in the wrist piece towards my thumb, then I'm going to turn my fingers back forward. So for now I'm going to work on a stretch. So alternate rounding your back. My toes are under or Flat, and you get to the side. 
I feel that stretching my feet any way I can, and the outside of the shoe, I'm going to give it. I'm just going to keep my toes under. Okay, now last time, I'm going to start turning my hands back front. Feels much better. Chin towards chest, round the back. Arch the spine. Okay, now when you come to neutral here, let's turn our bolster forwards. And we're actually going to move the hips back as if you're moving the child's pose. So forehead on the bolster. If you can keep this with your knees in this angle for a few moments, try. If it's too much, let your hips be up in the air. So no worries. Okay, now relax your wrists a bit here. Let your hands open out. Inhale forward all the way through and up dog with the thighs on the bolster. Lift up with the chest. Bend your elbows, lower down the chest, lower down the elbows on the floor. And then feel where your thighs stretch back. Feel where your legs, they're not such a stretch as much as they just are. Feel the top of the feet pressing. And see if you can start to merge your chest a little bit forward with the weight in your forearms. Okay, feel the weight in your elbows, in your hands. Try to balance the energy through the thighs. So now crown the head forward. Left leg up behind you and right leg, or sorry, right leg, right arm forward. Well, you could try to get your right leg to do this, but unlikely in this creature form. Okay, now when we switch sides, right forearm down, left leg down, and then as my right leg lifts up, I feel where it basically contracts and co-contracts around my right buttock. And now as the left limb reaches forward, could be anything if it's a limb. So when I reach the left limb forward, I'm feeling the weight of my belly in the bolster. Belly in the bolster. That could be the name of a class, huh? Belly in the bolster. And now left arm, does the arm go down feel better than the leg first? I mean, you might kind of feel how you're balancing it. That squeeze and control. Now when we come up to table, we're going to step the right foot to the top right corner of our mat. We'll get right into this. Pivot the bolster across. That would be kind of centered of your mat, your bolster. You don't want it too close to your right um, calf here. Get some blocks, second setting, and then scoop forward so you feel that scoop of the left leg down. Okay, so feeling how the the connective tissue basically glides down into the bolster. I'm trying to get this front hip rim to move down the, the quad belly of the bolster. Thigh belly. Okay. All right, now try turning left to the right. So your left hand is on the block. My block is pretty wide. I'm going to go for it. Just let it be out mid height. And turn to my right with my arm up. So feel that reach. I feel my leg. I don't feel this arm working as much as my legs are, but I'm going to feel the opposition. Okay, now as that right hand lowers down, my back foot is going to stretch back with the toes down, lift up to the torso. My foot's down, top of the foot is down, stretching through the shin. Okay, now move your blocks a little closer to the bolster. And as you toe under on your left foot, you're going to lift up the knee and work the weight into that um, back foot. So I want you to reach back into that heel and let the toes on the right foot flip up or let the toes on the front foot stay down. So feeling how you can work with the elasticity of the, the leg 
fibers in the back lower leg. And feel the broadness of your stance for the benefit of your right sitting bone and the awareness behind the right leg to open. Okay, so try to let that stand like there's a door that is kind of the dissection in the middle of that right hamstring. You're trying to get that, the, that floor to span out. All right, let's play with triangle pose. So we're going to have our right foot parallel. The back foot's going to pivot out. And I want you to, this for today's purpose, we're going to line up our front heel. If you can kind of mentally scan where that line of energy is from the right heel to the arch of the back of the foot. And then place your blocks. You might want to put your blocks in a stack at their second setting or their first setting and stretch your left arm up. I like to feel that I have these triangle shapes in the pose. Not that if I close my eyes, I can see those triangle shapes, but feeling the inner leg on that front thigh and the hip on that back. I feel many different spans in my body working. But I want you to let your right arm either lower down if it's possible. You can always bend your right knee and change it so you're down to one block, okay? If that's really intense on your right side body, have the block a little bit higher, but you'll probably need a block for this one, or a suitcase, okay? So feel that left arm lifting. Straight above the shoulder, breathe. It only helps try to tug up the thighs, so drop the kneecaps, sucking up the quads. Okay, we'll bend the right knee. That kind of breaks pose. We'll break pose. Okay, reach the left hand down, get a hold of both of your blocks, and turn to your left so your feet are in a wide stance. And take the footing so that they're paralleling paralleling all the way, okay? And get a feel where the seat reaches back. Thighs grip up like you're sucking up the quadriceps, okay? Feel like the upper back is stabilizing here. And then working your way to a wide downward dog. So my blocks, I'm gonna lower them all the way. You might put your hands on the floor if you don't wanna use your blocks. And feel your brain lower between your arms. So my hips reach back, my feet are parallel, that's key here. And the head brain between the arms. Let's spend about a full eight breaths here. If the legs get a little bit slack, I want you to concentrate on the micro bend of the knees. They get slack and push back. You can't quite strengthen around the legs. Feel as if the thigh bands are being drawn up above your knees towards your hip rim. Now slide the blocks closer into your center and feel the solid focus in the legs here as if your legs are in a wide stance. I suppose they are, you don't have to think about it, but they are. The feet are in a wide stance with the toes turning in a little bit. So turn the feet so the toes turn in slightly. Get a feel of solid through your arms as if you were about ready to depend on them to hold you up. So, Bring a little more weight into your arms. The arms are straight. This is key for the upper back spread. Try to spread across the shoulder blades. Now you could take your blocks out a little bit. If the shoulder blade awareness is kind of getting a little rounded, you're hunkering down. Your pose is in place. Pose is in place. 
Okay. So now as I bend the knees and I move into a wide squat, so again, my feet and toes are slightly turned in. So I'm moving my seat back as if I'm about ready to move into my seat, but I'm, my legs are pretty wide stance, so that's not gonna happen, I'm not gonna sit down. But I'm certainly strengthening into my legs. Okay, keep that awareness flowing. So when I move my legs up straight, I'm gonna take my blocks, I'm gonna turn forward and move into chair pose. So my right foot front, step the left foot the sides and then place a ball or block between the knees. They both are going to work for you. Okay, ball and block. So squeeze. If you have a ball, you can squeeze it, right? The block, it's kind of like it doesn't respond to your, your energy. It just, it's a block. It's blocked. It has blocks. It has blocks. All right. And it probably will never lose its. Um, it's blockness, right? The ball will lose its ballness, right? It gets smushed. It eventually deflates. So feel the arms reaching. And you can barely see that there's a person here. But feel the hips reaching back, feel the legs squeeze that block or ball. Again, I want you to put down the weight into your feet like you're making some firm footprints and then stand up. And let the arms reach up. Feel the arms reaching. Oops. Independent, separate. Feel the fingers pull up. You can always separate your feet if it feels too boxed in or blocked in. So spread the arms open and then dive forward, swan dive. Move the block away so you've got the two supports, the left. A right foot steps back, left foot is forwards. And this side will go a little bit backwards to it, but keep all the, the wisdom in mind for, for um, posture intelligence. So we have that left foot pushing down, and my right heel is going to also reach down now. So I'm trying to lengthen the legs. It might be particularly interesting to warm up the calf on the back leg. Notice if you're pitching a lot forward into your wrists. So if that's part of your process, move your blocks up to the highest setting and see if you can start to reach through your left hamstring and feel the waist stretch forward. Nice, go back heel. Ah. Finding what's essentially um, good about the moment you're in, like is there a place internally, or maybe this is a lot of focus for you in the standing postures. Maybe this is where you take a break, but I encourage you to, to work a little bit with them. There's a reason they exist, right? It's all well-rounded uh, physical habits. So when my left leg is straight-ish, I'm gonna pivot my back foot. I'm gonna play with this a little bit. I have my back foot turned out. My left heel is in line with, I think, the arch of my right foot. And I'm gonna prep for a triangle. So we're coming into it from the base instead of the top. So this is why a block set might be essential for you because you're going from down to up versus up to down in this shape. So I have my left hand on that block set and I'm trying to get this left thigh to pull up. So I want the thigh energy to lift up into the hip rim and then my right hip is going to pull back and my right buttock is, is completely gripped up now. It's got a wrapper around it pretty much. So Feel this right side of the waist secure, and then the right arm flows up. You know, it just flows, doesn't it? It didn't take any energy, but feel where the chest opens, and feel where the foot on the back leg presses. Breathe. And if any time you're in the shape, you decide, you know, I want to come up, I want to come up. Well, bend your left knee and try what it feels like to come up, and feel yourself move back down. Right? 
kind of play with this leverage using the legs to help you along your way. They help you all day get somewhere. So they'll help you get through this. So feel the openness. I'm going to turn to look down at my left hand. And if you might take your block a little lower, you might take it higher. Right? You might go, oh, I think I like this better. Or maybe you're going to lower it down. So I don't want to encourage you to do anything that's causing suffering in your nervous system. Okay, that right arm is going to sweep over the side of my face. I'm going to bend the left knee. Okay, I'm going to feel that side angle. And I'm going to be a little creative with it. So when I turn my ribs towards the left thigh, I'm going to get my block set up under my hands. And then start to pursue the back heel up and the right knee behind you down the blanket. And then sweep into a low lunge. Really feel the top of the back foot down. And then reach through the leg chest. Hands are going to take the blocks out wide. The eyes are going to move forward, both of them. They're including each other. Stretch through the hips. This is the kind of the last standing shape opportunity here. So really get the feel of the left foot print. Make sure the left knee is not over the ankle. Make sure it's just above, not over toes. Okay, spines. And then walk the left foot, toe heel to the right side of your mat, toe heel. Actually, wait, don't go quite there yet. Okay, bring the foot back to parallel and stretch the left arm. Another something. Something to bring back in, not to forget. So feel the, the challenge, right? You would only forget something like this if it was a little bit of a challenge. Left arm sweeps back, comes down, and then we follow left foot, toe heel, toe heel, over to the right side of your mat. Shift your knee open. Use any props that are helpful in your blocks. Bolster setting underneath your seat. Notice how you get kind of oozy, you kind of ooze into the bolster. But let the muscles stay established so they don't completely ooze. We could have a class called the ooze class. Just about oozing. Losing it. So lean into it. I like the block sometimes under my elbows, sometimes not. If you have other props, bolster, blankets, you can use that. If your back is a little bit tense on this left um, side of the spine over to the hip, you might find moving a little side to side like you're wagging your tail. And sometimes feeling that right thigh stretch back, really reaching through the thigh with the foot going in towards your seat, not too deeply, just the right amount can feel great. I don't know if it feels great, but I feel the pelvic floor. I feel the connectivity of my upper and lower body. You now feeling the back leg release. Especially if there's more that you could have done with that one, this is a good time to kind of evolve our way around to our back. So I want you to stay centered here with your hip. Breathe. Okay, feel where your center of gravity is in the pelvis. And then when you walk up with your hands and you shift your weight into your left thigh, bring the right leg forward. And then Let's move on to our backs. Blanket back, hip center bolster. 
And then as I lower on my spine, my hips are balanced up onto the bolster to lift up my legs first. Legs first, foot second, okay? So to get a hold of your belt, buckle it up. Okay. So we'll place it so that there is a wide loop. It's much wider than the last loop I had. Okay, so as I place it under my right foot and stretch my right leg up, I'm going to slide my left thigh down and if by chance you have sandbag, place it on the left thigh before you get to venture some of this belt. Yeah, place it where it's pretty cozy. It's not going to take too much energy for you to have to put it back on if it falls. So as I move my belt loop, I've got a pretty wide loop, so if I place it to the center of the back of my head, I have it so I can easily lower my head down. So I'm gonna tighten it up enough that my, my whole occipital bridge right now is supported. And I like the idea of using the belt. It kind of squishes your head a little bit. It's a little bit of a brain squish, which is calming, clearly for the mind. Why wouldn't we have, we have eye pillows, the um, bands you put around for relaxation around your head. So this is similar in the awareness of calming. So if the sand on the left leg isn't working for you, you can always move it away. You can always step into the left foot with your sandbag on, and kind of progressively lower it down. Accepting where it ends up, foot and all. So I invite you to explore this for several more moments here with the brain float and feeling where the belt is at the back of your head. Now for most of us, we might have the belt on but be touching our blanket. And that's okay, we feel like we have traction and that's what we need. Some of us are gonna want the belt to be a little bit shorter and feel the hamstring stretch a little more. So you can hold your elbows overhead, you can let your arms float open. And you again could remove that sand and bend your knee. That might feel good too. That feels good for me, having the leg so it's a proper balance for my hip and my spine. Now stay exactly where you are with your right hamstring, flushing. Hold the back of your head carefully. So I interlace my fingers at the back of my head and then bring my left foot up. And then as you change sides, you're gonna lower that right foot. And the differences in the second side could be you, it could be quite different in the lower leg versus the upper leg. You know, one side you might notice the lower, the calf, one side more of the hamstring or the attachment. So this is a good time to kind of survey your situation inside. Maybe you can make some choices with your habits that way. I think that takes a lot of analysis to really figure it out with for my left hamstrings, open to my right, my left calf is tighter than, so feeling the balancing you can work with in this session. Right foot could be on the floor, or sandbag could be on the right thigh. And you could hold on to the side of the bolster, you could relax your arms on the bolster, or bring them overhead. So as we get into this inversion kind of chamber of focus, this is where we're ending up is in this 
patterns of inversion for wellness. So just feeling the gravitational flow through the structure, but then now we're going to move into more of the, the difference in direction in the organs. So with your brain being turned in this lane of travel, let's let that left foot give a few more moments of pressure now. If your knee is fully stretched out, it feels like it's pushing back and the muscles are not co-contracting, you might bend your knee. Yeah, my legs feel like they've warmed up. They're certainly recycling the energy back to my organs and my heart. You know, my the heart rate is just changes and the flow to the arteries change, right? Your foot is upside down. So as you move your belt off your head, move it to your feet. Both feet up, feet push out, and directionally um, challenge yourself a little bit here with the span, leg span. Okay, so the knees could do a mild softening. That feels nice in the back. You could rock a little side to side. Just feel like all the different lanes of travel you could do upside down. Just the movements and the legs that are, that are minor but influential. And you might bend your knees as long as they don't turn inwards and not massively outwards. Feel that flush from side to side. Now feel right into the center piece here. And when the knees bend, you're going to reach for the belt piece closest to your hands and slide your feet together. Bring your hands um, inside the belt so the belt is thread over my wrist right below my thumbs and my hands in prayer position. I'm going to bend my elbows so the thumbs move towards my forehead. And try to let my elbows actually push up towards the ceiling. Okay, so my upper back is pressing. If you are not happy with this in your neck, you might move your, your blankie completely away. Now I want you to feel like you can feel your upper back here. So try to move your elbows up. Up. As if you had a block between them. I know we can't add the block or another belt right now, but we'll do the best we can. We'll do the belt we can. Okay. All right. Now, as your hands are together, your elbows are going to draw right in together now. So the belt is around your elbows, right? So they're in my elbows. My elbows are bending. My belt is there. I did it. I got there. It wasn't too bad. So resistance, push with your feet, resistance with the elbows, don't let one run over the other, find balance. Should I make the belt shorter? It's probably better to just accept where it is. You don't need to improve on it. Breathe. Okay, now bend your knees so your feet move forwards. Reach your hands to the belt. Slide your hands closer to your feet and move your belt off your feet. And let's take an elevated reclining twist. Okay. So again, the focus is inversions. So I've got my blocks to the side. We've got one more on our bolster. Two more, then we'll go up to the wall. So I've got my blocks right on the side if they're flat setting or flat. I'm going to hold on to them with my hands. I imagine you might have longer arms than me. So this might not work for everybody, but I've got my arms wide and my knees go left. A little bit of shift in my spine. Now, try to let your hands hold onto the blocks or hands on the floor, palms down. Push into the blocks or down into your hands, knees in center. Keep pushing down into your hands, knees to the right. We try to push into the palms on the floor, 
with the hands into the blocks, both are fine. Yeah, if you're looking for the back to release or have an adjustment, sometimes you might have to have your arm out for that to occur. But feel what happens on the other side. Take it one more time, knees to left. Let's be sand free on this one. This time, if your hands on the block, stretch your arm open, palm open. And you cross, move away, and turns right. Knees in center and to the right side, the knees go, arms open, palms open. If you're in a V shape with the arms versus a T shape, that's okay. I would go with what feels rib friendly. Right, the ribs are about ready to be very narrow and centered for a full inversion, so you want to let them feel like they can fluff out. Now feeling the belly centric, right? The belly pulses with the breath. Now that you've had the twisting specifics, we're going to move back and center and head center, hands to bolster, knees to chest, push the bolster forward. Okay. Hands on the back of the legs. Now, if you need to do a couple bridge poses before you go to the wall or legs up the wall, you might want to do a couple bridge poses here. And you might be not wanting to do bridge poses because your back is kind of sealed in length right now. It's up to you. You were just on the bolster with your sacrum, uh, your pelvis, you're going to do that again at the wall. So we're trying to connect those two layers so there's not much violation in the SI joint between. So some people need to do bridge, but some may be okay. Roll to the side. Okay, we're going to take a blanket on top of our bolster at the wall. So if you're in a wall space, um, if you are not interested in that blanket on the bolster, you can also opt out of that. But this gives you a little more height. You can always give it a Try it. If you fall off, um, you can try again, and it might work out just fine. So I've got my bolster right up against the wall, my blanket on top, optional. I will need a sandbag and my body on the bolster. On the blanket, sorry. So I'm sitting up with my seat against the wall, so my outer hip is against the side of the bolster, all the way to the side. You can notice how it will kind of flap up your bolster um, spatially lifts a little bit here. So my goal is to roll the sacrum on the bolster and let the leg swing up. Okay? So I fine-tune it by actually pushing my bolster to my back versus pushing my seat closer to the wall. Now the blanket is an option. It's nice to have, I think. It's good for this pose because of the hips elevated. Um, not for all poses is a blanket under your head intelligent. So when I'm here, I'm going to add my sand to my feet. If you decide to go sandless, you can also put your belt around your feet and have your legs in that wide stance that we had a moment ago. Feel your arms stand open. Feel that gravitational transition in your legs, your pelvis, and the chest opening. Let the brain be below the abdominal organ, so it's back and down. And the belly moves freely with the breath. Let your arms feel they're an open quality, even. And let's gather our attention on just the even rhythm of our breath. Feel the inhale gliding in. Exhale, letting go. The 
Feel how the elevation of the hips bring some comfort to our upper back, our neck, and our shoulders. And let that weight difference into our upper back actually release the chest open and receive the oxygen in, feel the diaphragm's motion against gravity on the inhale and with gravity on the out breath. Take about another full minute here. Give yourself enough time to move the blood from the extremities back to the vital organs, back to the heart, the lungs, palms, the brain. So your feet could be at the wall, they could be distant from the wall. Go with what feels helpful in your lower back. What feels the best in your lower back? If it's not this pose, find a pose that feels good in your back. It might be taking the sand off, putting the feet together, knees out. It might be resting on your back and your feet on the floor. But for those of us with leg position in wall legs, give it a few more slow, deep breaths. Bend your knees, slide your feet, just move them away from the wall and a few of the knees approach bending towards your shoulders. And you can move the sand over to the side or drop it overhead. Feet together, knees apart at the wall in a reclining wall butterfly. Now, if your feet can slide farther down to the groin stretch, go for it. Try to counteract that with the hands pressing. Okay, now knees to each other. Try to abide by concentration here, knees to chest. And let the back move a little side to side with the knees moving side to side. And then with true blend of motion, we're going to roll to the right side. Unless your area doesn't allow you to, and roll up to sit. Sitting anywhere on height with your knees open and your feet in a cross angle. Get a feeling where the spine is centering up from the back of the hips. If your position is kind of cropped a little forward on the sitting bones, it's a little precarious, but it feels interesting in my lower core just to try to let the knees drop down. Lining up the energy inside your body and feeling the purpose of practice, right? Absorbing the physical structure, but feeling the energy that you absorb from the practice. So let's find our hands sliding on the thighs, uniting the palms in unity to the space in front of the heart, into touching your body with the hands, thumbs touching close. Let's space a moment to feel the support from others that are in this practice with you now, in our homes. And a unique opportunity to honor this place inside of you of peace, of light, 
community and placing that on a breath in. And with an exhale, letting go outwards to others, all those things bowing into your heart. And gratitude 